bullying. Cyberbullying happens every single second of the day, honestly. It did start to get me down. It made me feel worthless. Mean, degrading comments posted for everyone to see. At its worst, cyberbullying's been linked to isolation, depression, even suicide. So what can parents do? Tonight, we'll tackle it head on. Our My Kid Would Never Watch Mobile is driving through the streets of America's suburbs. <gasps> parents will watch on hidden cameras from our secret war room filled with special surveillance equipment as their kids take on one of the toughest challenges of all. Look at her face, of course she feels hurt. Bullying is a topic we've touched on before. Move! But never like this. We'll watch as these kids deal with mean bullies in person. Can you just like shut up? And online. <laughs> They're getting really nasty on social media. And there's a new twist. <laughs> we turn the tables and point our hidden cameras at the parents. This time, the actor playing the bully is me. Ugh, it's terrible. I don't think you know what you're talking about. Will these moms know what to do? I want you to pick one moment where you look back and you're like, this is what I should have done. Rosalind Weissman will help us navigate today's complicated world of bullying. She's an educator who's written numerous books on teens, including Queen Bees and Wannabes, the basis for the movie Mean Girls. I want parents to realize that their children have probably already been in this experience. Do not wait. Sit down with your kid and say, let's figure out how to handle this. To help kids and their parents figure it all out, we've set up this room with hidden cameras and hired actors to play our bullies and victims. 14-year-old yeah. <laughs> Colette and 13-year-old Jaden are not actors. They think they're here to take part in a focus group. They don't know that their moms are joining me in our watchmobile parked just outside. Jaden is a very good student. She's a very good friend. Jaden's mother says her daughter has been the victim of cyberbullying. Some kids had made an Instagram page and they put on pictures of people that they hate that day and Jaden's picture was on there. Colette's mom says her daughter has also suffered bullying. There was a, a young man who was coming over to her where she was at her locker and telling her she should kill herself mm -hmm. and I contacted the school. And how did the school handle that situation? It stopped, so I'm assuming they got in touch with the boy's parents. So how will these two girls react when they see someone else bullied face to face and on the internet? I think she's going to know the right thing is to speak up, but I'm afraid that she's going to be like most 13 year olds and not be able to find her voice. Phyllis, what about Colette? From her personality, I would predict that she would definitely speak up. Okay, you ready to see how they do? Sure. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jaden. I'm on Instagram, Vine, Tumblr. The kids are all in the room being interviewed for what they think is our pop culture focus group. Then the visible cameras leave, but our hidden cameras keep rolling. I mean, like, what about like the voice? Isn't that? Oh, like... I love the oh, voice. Oh, yeah, that's really popular. Things get off to a friendly start with the kids all agreeing on their favorite TV show. <laughs> Our bully accomplice is charming. Where'd you guys get your clothes? Cause like, oh, his outfits are really cute. <laughs> Thank you. And our guy bully is flirty. Although we are big fans of Victoria's Secret too. Wow, stop, mm. stop. So we're starting off with something like, you know, really just group dynamics. Our parenting expert joins us in the watchmobile. So here in this situation, you've got a bully who is a handsome kid. You wonder if the girls are being influenced at all by that. Well, I think that's the way people are wired. Mm -hmm. Forget kids. I mean, we tend to be more attracted to attractive people. In just a few minutes, the social hierarchy is established. The popular kids at one end of the table, the actor playing a nerdy kid at the other, and Colette and Jaden right in the middle. Mm. Um, the bullies urban. soon zero in on Jeff and his size. Yeah, like these jeans are from Urban. Jeff, those are slim fit. <laughs> Jeff. Everything slim fit on him. <laughs> The real bullying is about to start. Jeff, what about you? Who's your favorite YouTube channel person? Besides like Food Network. Does it work? We're watching these actors play out a familiar and upsetting scene. Bullies picking on someone they think is vulnerable. In this case, they tease our victim, also an actor, about his weight. Jeff, what about you? Who's your favorite YouTube channel person? Besides like Food Network. 
stuck in the middle are two unsuspecting teens, 14-year-old Colette and 13-year-old Jaden. They have no idea these mean kids are actors as they lob zingers at our overweight victim. Jay Law from Hunger Games, which Jeff has never had to deal with in his life. They're starting to ratchet up the bullying. Everything is fat jokes. <laughs> the bullies compare him to a bloated movie character. Do you like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Jeff? Right. <laughs> Jeff based his costume today off Oh my gosh, the blueberry, the, blueberry, the one that <laughs> Yeah. They're getting uncomfortable. That's why they look at their phone all the time. Right. Yeah. But the girls can't avoid the bullying on their phones either. Our actors are going after our victim online too. <laughs> the kids are using their phones to rate some viral videos as part of our focus group. <laughs> when our victim says he likes this video featuring Weird Al. I really like the Weird Al one. Our bully pounces and starts cyberbullying. He sends a mean message to everyone in the group except our victim. The girls don't know it, but we're following their online conversation from our watchmobile. Our actor, the bully, is like, oh, yeah, this guy thought Weird Al was the funniest, probably because it's the only one including food. The girls see the message. Jaden totally saw the one about Jayden the boy because it. she looked at him and oh, she yeah. was wondering if he saw it. Will they be tempted to join the cyber bullies or will they speak up for our victim? Their moms watch anxiously. Are they just not responding? The girls begin typing. And it's not to defend our victim. They chime in with the bullies. OK, so Jaden said, he's annoying me. Oh, see. And Colette's like, OMG, wow, LMAO, laugh my, you know. <laughs> so. Tushy off. Their online conversation <laughs> continues. It seems this is where the girls feel safe confiding. <laughs> but remember, as part of our ruse, we interviewed them on camera earlier. And suddenly, they get worried they're being recorded right now. They say nothing in the room, but online. OK, so Jaden wrote, OMG, guys, we have to stop being mean to Jeff. They're definitely recording us. <gasps> so she's worried about being recorded. So she oh, doesn't mind being mean, she doesn't want to do it on camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a conversation. Jaden follows up with, OMG guys, we're so evil. Clearly they're saying, you know, let's stop this conversation, which is a good thing. But it seems to me that came from more out of fear, fear. of getting fear caught. Being. In the room, the body language is clear. Our victim is iced out. They're excluding him completely. This is so disturbing. Right. Yeah. That she wouldn't be more sensitive to the right. fact that he's being excluded when she herself has been excluded at times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Jeff, you got to contribute something, man. But as our victim shuts down, Jaden seems to really feel for him. She doesn't say anything to the bullies face to face, but pushes back online. I honestly feel bad. He's so quiet. I'm just like, ugh, bad person. She feels bad about it. Hi. It's time to let the kids group? know what's okay. really going on. Did you guys all work together as a team? Yep, some of them we had struggles with. Well, you're not really here for the focus group. We're actually doing a show called My Kid Would Never Do That. These guys are actors, the bullies, and Jeff is the victim. Did you guys feel like it was it intense was, in yeah, here? Yeah, it was kind of intense. Was I was intense like, and very quiet. Did you feel at, at one point that you ever wanted to speak up for Jeff? I did feel bad for Jeff. Yeah. Wanted it to stop. We tell the girls we've not only been watching them, but reading their comments online as well. So were you worried about Jeff's feelings, or were you more worried about we're going to come off looking bad? A little oh. bit, of, I can't lie, a little bit of both, but I'm, I can't say that it was just they're recording us. Were you afraid to speak up that because maybe you would become a target? I guess I'm just like used to being silent about stuff. I was trying to deflect it. Our expert comes in and explains how that can send a dangerous message to the victim. Do you see that by like by doing that and like let's just stay out of it looks like you're totally siding with them? Yeah, um, we I, did look like we're siding with them. The girls tell us they know what it feels like to be in the victim's shoes. I've had extreme experiences extreme. with bullying on multiple yeah. occasions. And like sometimes I've been bullied at my school and then it's just like it's just like so awkward and you don't want to say anything, you just sit yeah. there. Weissman understands and wants parents to know kids who've been victimized can have a harder time speaking up. It makes me think as a parent, what more should I be doing? How many more conversations? How many different ways should we have the conversations We've, that we're having? Me and my mom are close. Like, um, <laughs> 
I applaud you guys for being so honest and open and be willing to, you know, share what you have gone through to teach others. Aww. Our next teen hasn't been bullied himself, but his sister says she was the victim of nasty cyberbullying. Meet Connor. I am 13 years old and I use Instagram. His dad says even though Connor's in an unfamiliar environment. I think he'll stand up for himself or if someone else is being picked on, I think he would stand up. This time we've switched up some of the actors. These two guys are the bullies and this actor is playing our awkward victim. We leave them alone to answer the pop culture questions. When our victim says he likes a particular TV show. Maybe like Dance Moms is like really popular. Our bullies dive right in. Who are you? What kind of a suggestion was Dance Moms? I mean, unless you like to dance around in your house with a leotard on while watching Dance Moms. No, but that's I'm not cool. It's... At first, Connor laughs along. But then the bullies make fun of our victim's yeah, sweater like, and his hair. Girl. They compare him to a Harry Potter character. He looks like the guy who plays Ron Weasley. If Ron Weasley were to wear glasses and a shirt made out of autumn leaves. Okay, do you see that he's feeling nervous about his laughing? Or you see like he's looking at him? Connor looks like he's having fun with the guys, but also seems concerned about our victim. Favorite clothing brand, leaves. <laughs> so he laughed. But watch what he does next. I like leaves. Trying to make him feel a little bit better. I like leaves. Connor begins aligning himself with our victim. Watch how he disagrees with the bullies about the best video game. I think it's more like a Call of Duty kind of thing. Yeah, I think Call of Duty would be more. Uh, don't don't like kill me when I say I don't like Call of Duty. No? That's huge yeah. for him to say that to these boys. <laughs> It might not look like it's or that's huge for him to say he doesn't like Call of Duty. And he diffuses the tension with humor. I love Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I can tell. Ooh, She's my wife. Is. She's my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have to tell you guys? Nice. That a boy. I know a lot of people like Ariana Grande. She's my you wife know. too. Don't don't tell Jennifer Lawrence. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe most important of all, he repeatedly includes our victim, even when the bullies are at their meanest. We don't really need to worry about Ed's input anymore. What do you think, Ed? There you go. What do you think, Ed? <laughs> Cut him off there. Connor has taken crucial steps to support our victim in the room. But you, but you totally gotta like it. But things get more complicated when the bullying goes cyber. This is a lot for him to deal with. In his own quiet way, 13-year-old Connor has done his best to help the actor being bullied in this room. What do you think, Ed? But what will he do about the cyber bullying? It's something his older sister, Alyssa, says she's had to deal with. They said I look like disgusting, I look like a rat. They picked on what I look like, my nose. Alyssa says cyberbullying can be fast and furious, with kids piling on mean comments. Adults could usually say, oh, just ignore them, brush it off, but it can really get to someone's child if it's constantly happening every single day. They don't feel the loneliness that their child might feel. Now her brother Connor is about to deal with some cyber bullies and their dad is watching from our watchmobile. The bully takes a picture of our victim and posts it with this comment. He's like, no wonder why he voted Harry Potter. That's who he bases his outfit on, hashtag nerd. And then Connor sees all the comments. Connor sees, he's following. The bully turns up the heat, calling our victim the biggest nerd ever and then writing, in the latest comment, you'd be so much better if you wore a bag over your head. This time, one of the bullies actually asks Connor to like the post. But oh, you totally got to like it. <laughs> or leave a comment or something. This is a lot for him to deal with. Connor appears deep in thought. After one more look at our victim, he decides what to do. He puts his phone down, practically out of reach. The message is clear. He won't join in. He literally was being pressured by somebody and he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. He shows compassion to people that are getting picked on and I pretty much felt that he would do that. Hi. We come in to congratulate him on everything, everything he did yeah. right. I was sitting there and I was saying, my God, this child is trying everything. every single thing you could. Were you trying to say something or trying to put words I mean, like I what wanted to say? To, I wanted to say something. I wanted to help, but I didn't want them to retaliate on me. 
It's best, says Wiseman, to say something short and effective to the bullies, like stop it. But if you can't, you can still send a powerful message without saying a word, like Connor did when he pushed his phone away. Where did you feel the biggest resistance? Where was it the hardest to keep going? I mean, the whole thing was so hard to keep going because <laughs> yeah. he's just such a, a good kid. You know? yeah, I just felt is. so bad. Yeah. <laughs> can I give you a hug? Because I, I know what you're feeling. This is a lot to deal with. <laughs> and by the way, I'm your new wife. Jennifer Lawrence is not your wife. <laughs> A lot of kids told us they feared retaliation if they confronted the bullies. But there's another reason kids don't speak up, and it's a hard one to admit to. Sometimes they just don't like the victim. But that, says Rosalind Weissman, is no excuse. You can acknowledge it. Yeah, there, this person's annoying. There will be annoying people in the world. But just because there's somebody who doesn't get along or you don't feel as much in common with does not therefore mean that you just turn your back on them. So what will happen when our victim is Angel, an actress who we ask to appear immature, <laughs> awkward, even irritating? Like, think of the person who interrupts all the time and then tells their own story. Angel says when she was younger, she was targeted by bullies. I apparently had a reputation for being annoying in school. Let's see how our next teens do. First up, Grace. I'm 13 and I use Instagram. And Bianca, who's in the eighth grade. I'm in the Watchmobile with their parents. Grace's dad says she's outgoing into music and theater. He's told her to try to avoid any situations that involve bullying. Is she going to say something or back off and uh, back out of the situation? It depends on how far it goes. I'd be curious to see what like her facial expressions are and how mm -hmm. she's, you know, kind of what's going through her mind in a way. My gut would be that she'll, she'll stay out of it and, uh, you know, as long as she can. Bianca's mom says her daughter is quiet, an avid reader, and not big on social media. She also says Bianca has been the target of terrible bullying, some of it even physical. So she knows how it feels to be the victim. Yeah. She says she's told Bianca to speak up for herself. Nowadays, if you don't do anything, they're they're constantly coming back because, you know, you're not defending yourself. So they're like, mm -hmm. you know what, you're easy target. I don't want her to be an easy target. Okay, you ready to see how they do? Yeah. yeah. There we go. This time we have an all-girl group with actors playing our bullies and our victim who's been asked to be annoying. Before long, it becomes apparent that Angel isn't fitting in. It makes me think, oh my God, my cousin has this adorable little corgi and um, he's so, so hyper and he's just running around with all these, like, these stubby little legs. He just runs around all the time like this. So cute. Do you have a Angel, map or piece? Angel, like, sorry, we just need, what? we have like, you're we talking more. a lot and we just need to like get these all through. Then they make fun of her favorite social media site. A lot of teenagers use Tumblr like really, really often. I don't, think, I don't think anyone uses Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a little more like you're indoors yeah. a lot. <laughs> and they mock her when she imitates a YouTube character. It's like, hi everyone, I'm PewDiePie. <laughs> And Wait, can you say it again? PewDiePie! <laughs> one more, more time. It's really just, funny. just one more time. She just seems not there. Trying what gives to... you the indication that she's not there? Talk to me about was, that. Uh, she was just on the phone and mm -hmm. I don't know, or maybe she was trying to stay out of it. Now for the cyberbullying. Will it be easier for the girls to push back online? The mean girls take a picture of our victim when she's not looking and send it with this comment. Angel loves Weird Al. Big surprise that the weirdest girl likes Weird Al. Bianca doesn't respond, but Grace chimes in. Crying. <laughs> crying in all ways. <laughs> that cyber slang for laughing so hard you're crying. Grace, your daughter, crying. So your daughter is joining in a little bit. It's tough, because, you know, that's how kids, they want to be a part of the conversation. Then the bully takes it one step further. They're getting really nasty on social media. She takes a selfie with just Bianca and Grace and sends it to them with the comment, so glad you guys are here. And then, can Angel like, shut up, guys ignore her. Oh. So now they're, they're telling your girls to exclude Angel. Oh wow. What will the girls do this time? Remember, Bianca hasn't commented on any of the posts, and this time, Grace doesn't either. Angel, can you just, like, shut up? Because, <laughs> like, everything you're saying is kind of, like, bringing us down. Think before you talk. 
So it's getting they mean, look, and they look, they look like they're yeah. mm -hmm. really silent in that room. It's almost like your own girls are afraid to contribute any yeah, answers. Yeah, they're, they're kind of yeah. backing off. Yeah. The girls become more quiet, though Grace remains friendly with the bullies. I'm going to ask your daughters about laughing. Yeah. About why you laugh in certain situations. Um, because sometimes you laugh because you're nervous right. and you don't know what to do. Yeah. I mean, some of it, I think, in a group dynamic, you're trying to maybe get the group back on track, too. Right. You know, totally. Some of Absolutely. it's you know, almost yeah. involuntary. It looks like the girls aren't going to defend our victim in the room or online. So we get ready to wrap it up. Well, I know it's hard to tear your eyes away, but... But suddenly, the, uh, a dramatic reaction off, turns like, everything around. Is she crying? Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Grace and Bianca have watched our bullies pick on a girl who isn't fitting in. Hey, Angel, can you just like shut up? <laughs> Though the girls have clearly sensed the tension, they haven't confronted the bullies or reached out to our victim. But just as I'm about to leave our watchmobile with their parents to meet them, this happens. Jayla. The actor playing our victim starts to cry. Even looks like Angel is, you know, wow. upset, like emotional. Her emotional reaction sparks something in Bianca. She reaches over and touches Angel's leg and gives her a reassuring look, even asking Angel for her phone number. Well, yeah, just write him later. And then watch what happens as the other girls prepare to take a selfie. Bianca makes sure Angel comes over to get in the shot. And when she sees Angel didn't make it in. Is that one good? I don't know, I don't think we all got it. She makes them take it again. Maybe we should get up and, uh, cause, so we can all fit in? Yeah. As they pose, there's no question whose side Bianca is on. She wraps her arm around Angel and keeps it there. Nice. So your daughter did something for the victim. You're proud of her for that? Yeah, I really am. Did you guys all work together as a team? And I go to meet the girls, answers? and that's when it becomes yeah. clear that even though Everybody this is an acting job for like Angel, the, the nasty comments have brought choice? back a lot of that's real memories. Are you okay, Angel? Okay, so what really happened here? I'll tell you what really happened. We're doing a show called My Kid Would Never Do That. And actually, Angel's an actress. You two are really here about what? bullying. Yeah. This oh is my a God. show about bullying. And it was hard. This is no act. This, this is this, you really <laughs> This isn't. It brings back so many memories because um for me like I've gone through this before as yeah. a kid as well. And uh, so um, I want to say to you Bianca, thank you for pulling me inside. When she saw that I started crying, she started comforting me. Where did that come from, Bianca? Um well, I I get bullied a lot too. Um so I really know how it feels. Now, Grace, you know, did you pick up on the bullying? Yeah, and I was like, I didn't want to say anything because like, I'm, everyone yeah. here is like, really nice. We tell them we've been reading the comments they posted online. Remember, when one of the bullies called our victim weird, Grace went along. And not to put you on the spot, mm -hmm. because, but it's a natural thing, I think, for kids to want to feel like they're a part of the conversation yeah. on social media. So you chimed in there on that maybe just you know, did you feel like you had to get them to like you? Well, I felt more of a connection to them because, like, I, I didn't really have any, like, you know, anything in common with you, Angel. And that's the whole point of our demonstration, says Weissman, who comes in to talk to the girls. It shouldn't matter if you're like those people or not, like that you have stuff in common with them or not, because if someone's being mean and they're different, then that actually should be the flag of, like, wait, this is totally wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. right? I regret doing like a lot of things like I feel like I should have kind of went with Bianca and she did the right thing. Okay. I feel like <laughs> I, that's very brave of you to say well, that. It's mature, it takes a lot actually. of courage. It's, yeah. really, it's really mature of you. When it comes to cyberbullying, Weissman says it's not enough for parents to simply to tell kids be nice. Really they need to be like taught exactly to what to do. I want you to think about what's a short thing you would say online, not something you would say like in you know, on person because mm -hmm. they're different. So when you're online, you need to say something short like that stops it, mm -hmm. right? So like, what do you want to do? That's not funny. All right. Or like, you know, just stop. I think not funny mm -hmm. and stop are both good because there's nowhere to go from there. Do you feel like you learned a lot from this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so did their parents. It was a good learning experience. I think you made some very good points about, you know, 
there's going to be conflict. There are difficult things we have to deal with in, mm -hmm. in life, and that's how you mature and be, you know become yeah. you know mm -hmm. a, a better person and a yeah. better adult. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> for our next group, we have a big surprise for the parents. <laughs> But we'll start with their kids, Natalie and Lindsay, both 13. Okay, so reality show, Keeping Up. Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I watch that, I have to be honest. I'm monitoring from our watchmobile with Lindsay's mother. She is really sweet, sensitive, uh, athletic. I would say very empathetic. And Natalie's mom. Natalie is a sweet girl. She's a very warm person. I think that she cares about what people are thinking about her. I think that she wants to be liked. So how do they think their daughters will react? If she will speak up, 50-50 chance. I think if it's something that she's sensitive to, I think that she will speak up. You ready to see how your kids do? Ready to see it. We have the same team of actors playing mean girls and victim. Our bullies jump right in. Angel, going based on some of your other answers, I think maybe we should just not listen to that input at all. Yeah. Lindsay just looked at Natalie. The bullies attack our victim's appearance. You know, you definitely don't look at beauty video tutorials on <laughs> YouTube, but... but um, the girls seem to notice that our victim is hurt. They look at each other again and change the subject. Oh, she yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Of when she says something rude, they're not even responding, the girls. They're just going on to the next subject. Like, they didn't we're even avoiding. hear that. And they're avoiding. Avoiding. Is there anything you'd like your daughter to be doing differently right now? Well, it would be nice if she said, oh, let's just hear what Angel has to say, or mm -hmm. that story is mm -hmm. interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Though the girls seem troubled, they don't say anything. But what will they do when the bullying goes virtual? Our mean girls make fun of our victim, Angel. Weird girl likes Weird Al. Natalie and Lindsay see the post, but seem at a loss as to what to do. They're not partaking in the meanness. They're not liking. They don't want to be contributing to it. Right. Positive, pro, but mm -hmm. con is they're not stopping it. You guys good? Yeah. How's I go in to tell the girls what's really yeah. happening. Oh my God. <laughs> and they tell me something we didn't know. They were texting each other, having a private conversation we couldn't see. I she said, said, I know, right? It's a little intense. I said, <laughs> I said, seriously, and then I wrote hashtag bullies. They tell us what a lot of kids yeah, told us so tonight. Much. They felt yeah. bad for our victim, but couldn't find the right words to confront the bullies, something even adults can yeah. relate to. I think that there's no age limit on when we face these issues and learn how to deal with them better. Would we as parents know what to do? I was stunned. I was in shock. We decided to turn our hidden cameras on the adults. It's time for our very first edition of My Parent Would Never Do That. Tonight, we've put kids to the test. What? Oh, yeah. Seeing how they react to bullying. Many of them yeah. struggled. But here's a question. Do we as parents really know what to do? When it comes to bullying, and preventing bullying, are we giving them the right tools? I don't think we are. I don't think we're giving them specific tools. Sometimes it's because I think we don't know the specific tools. We're not told and taught ourselves. And that's a problem, our parenting expert says, because our kids watch us constantly. What happens if we don't confront a bully? Or worse, act like bullies ourselves? You're being a terrible role model. All the children see it, and they talk about it. Yeah. Children talk about crazy parents all the time. It's not just what we say, but what we do. So we decided it was time to point the hidden cameras at the parents. They're the role models. Will they know what to do? Okay. This time, I'm playing the bully. I need a good disguise. First, I get some That's new curves. Layers. Oh my God, there's layers. Two layers of booty. Next up, a wardrobe change. So good. Then it's time for a new face. I get a prosthetic nose. How's the profile? A wig, <laughs> glasses, and long pink nails. My physical transformation is complete, but can I really play a believable bully? This is the easy part. The hard part is coming up next. Here's what we did. It's the night before we start testing kids. We invited two of the moms, Stacy and Allison, to come to our studio for a pre-interview. They don't know I'm involved in the project, so they're not looking for Natalie Morales. 
We're all backstage getting our makeup done, and I'm pretending to be just another mom like them. Thank you guys. Hi. Hi, ladies. They don't seem to recognize me. My victim is an actor playing the role of a makeup artist. Oh, oh you just got, oh, you got powder all over me. I get right to work in front of the unsuspecting moms. Have you done this before? Yeah. No. Oh, this looks awful. I escalate the nastiness. Oh God, I'm gonna look like a corpse with this. And treat the makeup lady like she's worthless. It's terrible, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Just, just let me do it. You're sure you're a makeup artist? The women clearly seem uncomfortable. Stacy makes a face and Allison turns away from me. They laugh nervously, <laughs> but they don't say a word about my behavior. Are you sure you've done this before? I leave the room unchecked. Hi. But when the real makeup artist arrives, the two women can't stop talking about me. Wait till you talk to your counterpart. She's like, are you really a makeup artist? You know it, you have the right colors. Did you say anything? No, I was stunned. I was in shock. As they talk things over, the moms seem to second guess themselves, wondering if they should have done something. I guess I sh we should have said, listen, it's really no big deal. In fact, they seem so troubled by it, they recount the story again, okay. this time to one of our producers. The other mom here, she was like a little bit, you know, abrasive to the, uh, Very abrasive. To, to the makeup artist. So it was like, Weird. But we just said, odd. I, I, I'm in shock right now. I'm sorry, I can't speak. It was the very next day that I sat down with them without a disguise and watched their daughters do exactly what they had done. Notice the bullies, talk about it amongst themselves, laugh nervously, and say nothing to stop it. Now with everyone in the room. It's not just you guys who have a hard time speaking up, okay? Take a look. I show them clips from the day before. Oh, this looks awful. And reveal that I was the bully. That's what you were doing yesterday. Yeah. I want you to look at, huh? Yeah. A bit of payback for the girls and a reminder for the adults. Dealing with a bully is tough at any age. Quite frankly, and maybe the girls felt the same way, like I didn't really want to get too involved. Big learning <laughs> for, everybody. for everyone. Well, the great thing is, is the parents learned as much as the kids <laughs> this time around, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So far, we've seen that even grown-ups have a hard time confronting bullies head on. We've got one more group, but if parents can't do it, how can we expect the kids to? We've seen how hard it is, even for adults, to confront a bully. And we've heard how devastating the effects of bullying can be. It made me honestly feel horrible. It was really like, hurtful to me. I couldn't concentrate in class. So far, no one has directly called our bullies out, but there's someone in our last group who should be up to the challenge. 15-year-old Kaylin. Her parents say they've always talked to her about how to deal with confrontation. And after she was bullied, she started an anti-bullying campaign. They've had meetings after school and uh, kids have made posters throughout the school and that kind of stuff. Hallelujah. She also has a brother with special needs, which has made her even more empathetic and protective. Big boy. With all these experiences, surely Kaylin will be the one who finally confronts our bullies, right? Well, not so fast. Saying something at school where you're comfortable is one thing, but in a room full of uh, people you don't know, it's gonna, it's gonna be more difficult. Joining her is 14-year-old Brittany, an outgoing girl who's into sports. Her mother says Brittany's been bullied on her school bus. She doesn't know how her daughter will react today. I'm not so sure. I think it's 50-50. Remember, Kaylin and Brittany think they're here to answer questions about what teens like. I want you guys to have a consensus. But our bullies, remember, their actors have a different agenda. Once again, they quickly single out our victim, dismissing her input about the best TV show. Like, I could see some of the, like, nerdier people in my, like, class totally watch all of those, but are a little too, like... Very, like, nerd-specific, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they compare her to a geeky character from television. She's, like, the nerdy character, yeah. and everyone sort of, like, picks on her. She's, like, so out of it. <laughs> Kaylin and Brittany are clearly aware of what's going on and don't seem to like it. Um, so you've read, you've read, like, Lord of the Rings Yeah, I, like, read, like, the Lord of the Rings. Do you know, like... Elvish. Oh my God, this is so funny. <laughs> Kaylin tries to stare them down with a long, hard glare. Oh I don't think your daughter uh, likes those girls anymore. Your daughter gave them a good, cold, hard <laughs> stare. 
If looks could kill, our bullies would be toast by now. But she doesn't say anything. Like, no offense, but like, you're not super with it. Kaylin's like, jaw literally like, drops as the bullies yeah. keep going. But but you should give us the video game yeah, answer because um, we don't play video games because we like have a social life. Sure. Finally, she's had enough. Um, I, mean, I like, think that was really disrespectful. Like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you guys, but yeah. just because her taste isn't your taste doesn't mean you can really, yeah. like, like pick on her. Kaylin directly you know confronts I mean? the bullies really and doesn't like stop. Like, you can disagree with her, but I don't think it's very Let's, nice to shoot her yeah. down. When the Mean Girls try to exclude <laughs> Angel from a group <laughs> selfie, yeah. Kaylin has an answer for that too. Here, we'll take our, it's okay you guys, we don't want to be in it, we'll take our own. Brittany seems caught in the middle, unsure of what to do. But yeah, what video game. Things escalate with the cyberbullying, and this time it gets meaner. The bullies make fun of our victim, writing, only Angel would think this video is the best video. And they make it public so she can see it. Guys, you know I can read the comments. Yeah. It's just a that joke, it's just a nice. joke. But Kaylin won't give them an inch online either. You're crossing lines and it's not funny anymore. It's really I mean, not like, funny. Do you feel her, Angel? Because like we were just like, you know. Look at her face, of course she feels her. Kaylin's confidence seems to help Brittany find her own voice. Guys, it's not, you shouldn't be doing something like that. I think Brittany's hearing her and kind of saying, okay, I need to also be a little bit more assertive about this. On top of everything Kaylin's done today, she goes one step further. She genuinely befriends our victim. I think that your taste is really cool. Thanks. And I would love for you to teach me about it more. For real. Your daughter is so sweet. Oh my gosh. I love your daughter. I want to be friends with her. How do you feel about that, David? I'm very proud. Um, this, uh, that's Kaylin. Her dad is overcome. He's got more guts than I do, that's for sure. <laughs> I, you know. Hi, guys. Hi. I go and tell the girls we've been watching on hidden cameras. Oh, God. <laughs> My dad saw me yell at people. No. You were phenomenal. <laughs> Weissman admires how Kaylin handled the tough situation with ease. You being able to articulate a really good, strong opinion is not yelling at people. You did that in an assertive way that was absolutely perfect. Weisman says even like, though Brittany like, wasn't as vocal, she that? too like, helped shut phone, down like, the bullies. Really I was watching your body language. At one point, you completely turned towards Angel. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage you that like the small things that you were doing actually make a difference. Come on in, parents. <laughs> Give your kids a big hug. Both their parents couldn't be proud her. Getting a little emotional, huh? <laughs> David, did you learn something about your daughter today that you didn't know before this? She's got, um, you know, a thousand times more guts than I do. Big hugs all around. Excellent everybody. job, ladies. <laughs> Bullying may be one of the most complicated situations you and your kids will ever face. You won't get it right every time, but the important thing is to keep trying. I want parents to realize this doesn't make them bad parents or their kids bad kids. It's that we are in messy communities where conflict happens. Sit down with your kid and say, you know what? Bad things are gonna happen, so let's figure out how to handle this so you can be proud of it and I can be proud of it. Who would call him dumb, like stupid? Like, are you an idiot? Started off with just like, at my old school name calling. There was like a website made against me. Someone called her fat. Oh, she was getting these like really rude texts, like, I don't like you. A bully told me that I should take my life. Just because I'm not doing it in person or physically doing it, it still can hurt someone and take them to the toll and to still do the same effect as bullying a person. A lot of times with cyberbullying, it's not just one person where you can block them. Usually it happens in groups, and even if it's one person that initiates it, tons of people join in on it. Adults usually say, oh, just ignore them, brush it off, but it can really get to someone's child if it's constantly happening every single day. They don't feel the loneliness that their child might feel. Stop, like, making fun of people. And it's, it's not right. It's not the right thing to do. If you're really feeling like bad about yourself and you need to take out the anger, then talk to someone. Talk to your parents. Get help. Don't take it out on others. Just stop. There's no point to it. Just worry about yourself and nobody else. Just stop the bullying.
So it's clear telling our kids just be nice doesn't work. So what does work? Well, I think that humor that doesn't put other kids down, but it really works as a distraction, can be really, really good. I also think that there's a difference for our kids between disagreeing. Like when we're in a group, you can mm -hmm. disagree about something, but just because you disagree doesn't mean that you have the right to demean or humiliate or ridicule somebody else. Distinguishing that for your kids is really important. And then the third thing I think that's really important is that when kids come up to a bully, they oftentimes will say, why are you being so mean? And they'll ask these questions as if there'd be ever be an answer that would be good enough. So don't ask questions. You just need to label the behavior, define something that you don't like, and name it. Don't talk about it for a really long time. These are not, this is an hour conversation we're having. 